friends with fromage, fromage with friends. <laughs> Fromage with friends. Welcome, everybody. I can never remember the name of anything. It must be the wine. It could be something like early. that. It might be a little early. But welcome, welcome to the fifth episode of Fromage with Friends. And um, I am here with great friends. My name is Gina. I'm here. Christina. Mm-hmm. I'm Rachel. Hello. I'm Rachel. These are two of the divas up here at our Del Mar shop. If you ever have the chance to come up and say hi to Rachel and Christina, do so. Uh, we've got Kristen here in the back, Sarah. It's a great team up here. And we are all friends of fromage, and we're very excited today to share um, a new type of cheese yes. with you. One that I think is kind of misinterpreted, um, right? Absolutely. And just kind of like, um, and not, doesn't get the credit it deserves. That's but right. Christina and Rachel are going to tell you today why it should, and that cheese is... The most popular cheese in the world, cheddar. <gasps> cheddar! Every day! <laughs> so, just a couple things I want to talk about right away. Um, cheddar is a hard cheese. Uh, it is aged a minimum of three to six months. It dates back to the 12th century. Uh, originates from a village of cheddar right outside Somerset, England, in southwest, yeah, southwest England. Um, the term cheddar cheese is not protected. The name is not protected, um, meaning that cheddar cheese can be made anywhere in the world. Technically, it should be made from cow's milk, but every once in a while you're going to see a cheddar that says goat cheddar, sheep cheddar, but usually it is cow's milk. Um, today we're all trying cow's milk cheddar. So on our plate today, starting yes. from the top, okay. the pumpkin, isn't it oh. cute? It's rustic red. Yes, uh, you guys, look at this. <laughs> you have to like pull it up and cute. see it and that, I'm going to eat the whole pumpkin. I've decided. Yeah, I don't know. As yeah. you should. Yeah. As you should. And then Are we're you not going to carve it first? I guess I should, oh, right? Oh my gosh. I'll work on that while you talk about it. And the next one we're going to try after that is the Barber's 1833, which is the little triangles right here. And then we're going to move Oops, on. Let me hold that up there just so everybody sees. Away. So these are the smaller of the triangles, right? Yes. Is Barber's. Okay. And then after that, we're going to go on to Montgomery Clothbound Cheddar. Ooh. And yeah. we so left a little spear. piece of the rind on there, so that'll be fun to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have Quebec Vintage Seven Year, right there, the two bigger triangles. Ooh. This one, I can see like little spots in there. You're yeah. going to tell us all about that. Yes. And then the best for last is the crumbled up pieces. That's Hook's 12 year cheddar. I don't know if oh, you've had years. 12 year cheddar before, but you're in for a treat. And then we added some oh. apple jam with pistachios. We have chocolate covered Kikos. Mm -hmm. um, tell them, what's a Kiko for it's those that don't like know? A corn nut, but better than 7 Eleven corn nuts. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's like it's Spanish. I, I, guys, I do want to hear what you think about these corn nuts because I love these chocolate covered Kikos. I had them at a Benissimo tasting at seven grand, the whiskey taste. Oh, really? Came back to the shop, was like, guys, these are must incredible, have. must have. <laughs> Sarah orders them, she's the manager here at Del Mar. Everybody tries them, everybody hates them. So oh, I'm the only you're one the who only likes one, them. So I'm really curious oh, if okay. people Fair like enough. them or they don't like them. So anyway, we'll be having them both. The important stuff. Yay or nay? That was very important. <laughs> um, we got the fresh blueberries. And these are not cranberries, these are cherries. So that goes really good with cheddar. And then, because it's Halloween, we got some extra candy chocolates. We got a peanut butter cup and a sea salt covered chocolate caramel thingy in recycled wrapping, as I was told five minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> and cheddar with chocolate is a good idea. Yes. We yes, will get yes, into that too. Yes. Yay. Always a good idea. Yeah. Always a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so there's two things I want everyone to remember from this class if you're gonna get anything. The first one is, what cheddar, like what defines cheddar. So it's not where it's from, it's the act of the cheese making. So how do I explain it? So it's a noun and it's a verb. So when something is cheddared, it means that it is cut, the curds are cut into slabs, okay? The slabs are then stacked on top of each other and then they are flipped and then they are like all the way is being released mm -hmm. from it so that way it allows it to be as dry as possible and then they flip it again and they restack and then they mill it into those little, little curd pieces. Mm -hmm. And like, if you've ever gone to like the rodeo and get the fried cheese, cheese curds, curds. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> right? So, yes. Yes. And they're also known as squeaky cheese. And so that is when you hear cheddar, cheddar, that is what's happening. 
Yeah. So I guess technically you could cheddar other cheeses, so maybe that's where the goat. You could, yeah, come into from. into the light, yeah, right? Yeah. Apparently, the USDA. This is not a fun. This is probably like a very not fun regulatory fact, but oh. apparently the USDA <laughs> does define cheddar, but it says that you can use the cheddaring process or another process that creates similar physical and chemical properties and call it a cheddar. And call it a cheddar. So it's like, what are we doing? But, <laughs> you know, either way, anyway. right? Yes. So cheddaring is a process. Process and uh, and a cheese yes and yes. Uh, can be done as long as it's in those guidelines okay. with any milk that you like yes so yeah just remember that one yeah. thing to remember <laughs> but cheddar curds can we talk really quick about curds because mm -hmm. we try to get fresh curds mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if you if, if you've had we've tried them from different places but the key is they're supposed to be fresh like literally made that day or then yeah. you know day or two yeah. later and they just never hold their flavor right without yeah, no matter the, those what features cheese the features ones were the closest like, yeah mm -hmm. but they're just too dense like they're not yeah yeah, yeah. I had, i've had them in madison wisconsin oh, you, you like, had features yeah. in madison not features oh. sorry sorry yeah, that was, <laughs> I was like, complicated yeah. like, what happened there? i just mean like on the day oh of, you had the yeah, fresh ones the so fresh that ones. i mean yeah. wisconsin that they're known for their fresh curds yeah. for sure i had um, fresh curds too in uh, did? minnesota i went to the yes. rodeo and then they had fresh cheese curds and you're like Okay. Yes, may I? <laughs> Excuse me. Do like you sell them by the popcorn bucket size, perhaps? <laughs> yes, 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 Wouldn't yes. that be good? Yes. Can I tell you how I had cheddar curds yeah, once that were so delicious? Um, just a little pile of curds sprinkled with celery salt. Okay, tell Ooh. me that seems weird, but it was oh, really, savory. really, really good. Yeah. Savory and good. Now, I am going to put a plug in, you guys. Yes. The one place that, if you go, I believe it's on Wednesdays, is Alesmith. If you go to their brewery, oh. He also is starting a little side business called Cheese Smith. So the brewer, um, Peter Zion of Ale Smith, is a complete renaissance man. He loves to brew, he loves things, love but it. he loves cheese. He's always dabbled in cheese, and now he created a little facility at Ale Smith to make curds. Now he only makes enough you know, to sell there right. at the um, wow. brewery, but if you want fresh curds, Give it a try and go yeah. to Ellsman and get yourself this? some curds. Yeah. Uh, he said he makes cheeses on Wednesdays, Wednesday. so they would be very fresh Wednesday nice. night or Thursday. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys there. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to dive in. Okay, what so are we going to do first? The wine real quick? Oh, I'm oh, so yes. sorry. Wine's important. I'm very very much so. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Go ahead. Rachel. Um, yes, cheers. Um, so the wine we're drinking today with the cheddar is the El Libre Cabernet. We get a lot of El Libre wines. We love their rosé um, especially as well. But um, to pair with the cheddar, especially the aged ones we have, we wanted something that was full body that's going to stand up to the cheddar. And because cheddar has such a high acidity, I would say like no to like a Sauvignon Blanc or like mm -hmm. any sort of higher acid white just because it's going to be too acidic. It's not going to play off the contrast. So um, this it. cab is from um, Argentina. It's nice and full bodied, fruit forward, and we were tasting it earlier with the cheese, and, and it, it really went great. It really right? does. Yeah, you need something bold to stand something up to bold it. Something bold. Yes, so. I think cabs, merlots, cheddar's good friends, mm -hmm. and good point on that acid. That's the science of it all. Right? Yeah, yeah. Rachel's our scientist. <laughs> our yeah, I mean, not true, but here we go. <laughs> but, but it is right. All right, yes, please. Yeah, and as a reminder, you're going to take a sip of the wine, coat your mouth, a little bite of cheese, and some wine, and then it's, it's going to be amazing. Be fantastic. So rustic reds up first. So I'm gonna get my little pumpkin. Are you gonna take the stem off of it? You gonna eat the stem, or what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Boop, there we go. Went for it. So rustic red is aged six to twelve months. It's from England, Somerset, which is about fifteen miles outside of the iconic village of Cheddar. Um, it is made from. All right, I'm gonna try to say it. Holstein. Yeah. Very nice. yeah, well done. Cows. <laughs> the black and white cows. Yes. Most popular cow, most uh, the cow that is living the most in the U.S. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's produced by Summerdale International under the Westminster brand. Is this a royal cheese, Westminster? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, very royal. <laughs> um, and the recipe for this was made by mistake, which I thought was really fun. So, mm -hmm. the cheesemaker accidentally added Helveticus culture, which is usually used in Alpine-style cheeses. And he didn't know he made a mistake until after it was aged and it was all done. And then they tasted it, and that's why you get like this sweet, mm. nutty, um, yes, caramelized. Caramely. It could be a cheddar alpine gouda together. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because of the sweet. Mm -hmm. 
That mm-hmm. crystallization is so awesome. And we were talking about it earlier. I was just reading that more and more cheddars nowadays, they're adding the Helveticus, the the culture for this, was to try to get that nutty, sweeter mm-hmm. type of cheddar kind of to take it mm-hmm. in a different direction than what we would call sharp, which is really that like acidic yes. tang that we think about. So this is like kind of in between with that mm-hmm. sweeter no, and you can see the. Sorry, I got excited mm-hmm. because when you open it up, you can see how the curds, like that, were yes. milled, are like formed together. Yeah, um, that, it's kind of fun to look at the cross section. Yeah, that natural. It, it's going to break no. these natural breaks because of uh, the layering technique. That yeah, you're and so when we use this mm-hmm. cheese on our trays in the shop, what we do is sometimes we just take the cheese and then we'll take a knife and we'll poke it and twist it and you just get these like really rustic like looking crumbles mm-hmm. and it looks fun because you know not triangles or sticks yeah. or yeah. exactly yeah so it's fun it's a rustic rustic red crumbles rustic rustic <laughs> red crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> I would like rustic rustic crumbles please <laughs> yeah it's funny how that breaks apart from the curd i mean the mm-hmm. little curds themselves are mm-hmm. what's breaking mm-hmm. apart mm-hmm. yeah and if you, you mentioned Beechers, because that's kind of the, in Seattle, you can watch the cheese making process happen. And they're known for their cheddar, the curds, fresh curds, and then cheddar. They take their curds, press them together, they weave together, and then they make these beautiful cheddars in brick and in circular form, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. And they, they make the flagship, right? Which I feel like is a sweeter cheddar. I think so too. too. So you wonder so if they I'm add. Wondering, yeah. Mm. It's all like proprietary. I'm sure they don't tell us what cultures they use. They're not <laughs> copying it. <laughs> Try it with the apple jam. It's oh, good. Really? Yeah. That would be so good. Apple, it's, there's that German saying, right? Uh, apple pie without some cheese mm. is like a kiss without a squeeze. That is so cute. cute. I love that. I I was thinking our pumpkin spice gouda might, if anything, go well with like an apple pie. Knit. You know, that, that we don't have on this plate. Sorry, that was <laughs> teaser. Sorry, we, we had that in our cheese lovers club. When I tasted it, I was like, you know what? This cheese is meant for anything. It's, it's meant for apple pie. pie. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand that Ryan says dog, the dog approves. Oh, good. Dog <laughs> so approved, this cheese right. is dog approved. Mm-hmm. Is any cheese not dog approved? Yeah, that's true. Which one isn't? <laughs> Would it be obscene to eat the whole pumpkin in one person, one sitting? Certainly not. No judgment. Okay, good. No, it is. It might happen. Ounces. I weighed it. So <laughs> that's that's a lot. Good. But we're not saying a yes. word. Yes. yes. Not a word. And yeah, when if you want to do this at home, you got to just make sure it's a certain level of thickness because if it's too thin, it's not going to hold up to the cookie cutter. So just ah, a tip. Yes. A tip. Brie is, is a good, good one to pop a cookie oh, cutter yeah, like a into, ghost. like a round. Oh, that, haven't you guys done that on the trays? Like you take the brie or just take uh, through the rind and, and then fill that around. with jam or something yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah, to yeah, give yeah, them yeah, yeah. the pretty look. Yeah, super nice. It is so good with the apple. You're completely yeah, right. Yeah, I love that. That's that combination amazing. screams fall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Now this is the second thing I want everyone to remember from the class. We're going to talk about life's greatest mystery. <laughs> oh. Why is cheddar cheese orange? That is the question. Life's greatest. It is. It really is. <laughs> it should be. I thought it was why is wine so good, but mm, no. 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 That's number two. This, this is, is first. what. Yes, this is what keeps me up late at night. So why is it orange? Yes. Yes, and what you know is orange better than white? Which we'll get Yellow. to. Which we'll get okay. to. Is it better? All right. <sighs> do do tell. Do okay. tell. So back in 17th century England, the cows that would produce the milk, their diet was high in. All right, here's the next word, beta carotene. And so it would cause an orange tint to their milk, which was an indication of like high quality cheese. Mm -hmm. And so lower quality cheese producers caught on to the game and they're like, oh, we got to color our cheese too. So people will think it's high quality. So they would add carrot juice, Uh saffron, Mm -hmm. marigold, not the same. And so later on, the United States wanted to adopt this process because, um, you know, in the spring and the summer, the they were eating the grass, orange milk, and then in the winter, they were eating hay, and it wasn't the same color, so they wanted a uniform color all year long, and they wanted to be, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana wanted their cheese to look different from the white cheese in like New England and New York, and so mm-hmm. they know. started adding um, a natto, which is a tasteless and odorless food coloring agent that comes from the achiote tree. It's the seed from the achiote tree. All natural. All, All natural. natural. Right. And not no flavor to it. Right. No Just flavor. color. <laughs> yes. So mm-hmm. the key thing is that an orange and white cheese <laughs> will taste the same as long as they're the same age. If they're the same age, they will taste the same. So 
don't come in here and say that you like orange cheese better than white or white than orange. And it's the same, it's the same. But I didn't know that either before I worked here, so I learned that. So I get it, I get it. So, so um, it, I also had heard, um, did we talk about it while I'm typing? Mm -hmm. uh, they used to color it with marigolds. Yes, to give oh, the, yeah. Yeah, but it was to give the flavor of a marigold. Obviously, that's a little bitter. Yeah, and carrot mm -hmm. juice, carrot juice, oh, and yeah, saffron. saffron. Yeah, saffron. Well, saffron sure. Sure. Good. Yes. And so, once the U.S. started adopting this technique, that explains why a lot of like cheese products are orange, orange like yes. American cheese and Cheetos. Oh. And that's how it adopted that. <laughs> Image and so I, th I thought that I was really. I don't know that that's a natto in Cheetos though. <laughs> yes, like the, this is what we need to find out. That's very, very nuclear. I should have nuclear. emailed Cheetos and asked. Nuclear, nuclear orange. We were yeah. talking about how this was kind of similar to red velvet back in the day. That used mm. to be chocolate, and then oh, they had yeah. red velvet when the chocolate rations. You know, you couldn't yes, get any. They would use beet juice and food mm -hmm. coloring and stuff like that. So. Anything for the colors. Isn't that funny that the reddishes and oranges are good food colors? Mm -hmm. but like yeah. blue, I still have trouble eating anything that's blue. You don't like these blueberries on the pen? Those look blackish to me. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? True blue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Windex blue, yeah. you know? Ooh, yeah. It looks yeah. medicinal, like chemical or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does everyone like the rustic red? I'm Thoughts, comments, concerns? Yes. What do we think out there? So far, everyone's just gobbling. Yes. And loving the jam with it for sure. Mm -hmm. but rustic and cherries and rustic is not expensive. Mm -hmm. That's another I think it's thing the to say. Cheese. Yes, so just like I mean, wine. like price wise. Yes, you, know? you can't judge a cheese by its price. Right. Right. You can't judge a wine by its price. Right. Sometimes you can get a very affordable, yeah. right? And rustic yeah. is rustic. Although is we're, we're then gonna taste the most expensive cheese. Yeah, in the shop. <laughs> so, so we're going up. And, yeah. and you can decide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try one of your chocolate favorite Kikos, too. Ah. You don't like them. Didn't you say that? You're trying it again. You're, I'm being she's polite. She's keeping it open mind. Oh, she's just being polite. <laughs> okay, here we are. They're not bad. It's like um, like the sea salt, like um, caramels. Like it's sweet and yeah, it's salty. Yeah, sweet salty. But what's, what's the problem? Mm, oh, oh, she's, uh, she's yeah. taking up her vote. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll refrain. I'll go a little later. And okay. Get okay. Oh, yeah. Chocolate covered yeah. Kiko. She's so wine. Yeah. We had a question from H, and we just touched on saffron. Yeah. There are... Uh, two cheeses that I know of, uh, one from Italy called Piacettino mm -hmm. that comes with the saffron flavoring in it. And what oh, was nice. the other one? The name of it? Oh my gosh, was saffron. That's the only no. one that we can get and get mm, maybe during the holidays. H is Pies, I'll, I'll type it in here, Piacentino, mm -hmm. uh, Italian saffron flavored cheese. Mm -hmm. Wow, that must mm -hmm. be expensive. Mm, it is. Yeah. And it's yeah. good. Yeah. It's a pecorino, cheap, you oh, know, and nice. then it's got just the. What is saffron? Smells like a flower, and it does smell smells like, like leather. A leather. I mean, it just is a yeah. very funky yeah. smell and taste, but yeah, yeah delicious. Yeah. I right? used to work in a spice shop, and we sold saffron. Oh. We kept it by the register. I'm sure like, you did, like the teeniest jar. Mm -hmm. for, yep. like that's that. as bad as a truffle, right? I mean, oh, cost-wise, yeah. I mean, yeah. ounce for ounce, saffron might be even more than a truffle or the same. The same. I think it's about mm -hmm. the same. It's about mm -hmm. the same. But wow. Mm -hmm. And very delicate, and you only need a little bit. And yes. Yeah. Teeny, teeny little do you. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> on truffle front, at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Barber's time. Next cheese. Barber's time. Yeah. All right. I'm going to grab a piece. So Barber's is also an English cheese from Somerset. It's a small triangle. Yeah. And it is made by the longest operating cheddar producing family in the world. Ah. What year did they start producing? 1933. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll the try it with the jam. It tastes very different from the rustic bread. Mm -hmm. A little bit more um, sweet. I think it's sweeter, but yeah. I don't. I'm sorry, what do we have to the Barbers. 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 Yes. Oh, I like barbers too. So both of these have been brick form too, right? Yes. It's more you know, almost, yeah, which I'll talk like about. Like a loaf of bread and, yeah. and a brick. Oh, that is sweeter. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, but I love that too. Yeah. Either of these, Ryan mentioned slathering it on a burger. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, Any of yeah. these. Yeah, the younger yeah. cheeses will melt more easy than an aged cheddar. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind when you're buying cheese for your mm -hmm. burgers, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So their dairy is on 2,500 acres, and they only use their, their own cows. They only have like about like 200 cows. They only use their own. And um, what else about them? They don't use hormones or antibiotics. And the cheese itself is aged a minimum of 20 months in wooden boxes. And they use the original cultures that they used back in 1833. So the flavor you're tasting right now is what it tasted like 
1833. Wow. Which I think is insane. That's crazy, yeah. And apparently they have a lab, we were talking about this, a lab on site where they keep all these cultures and they keep all the cultures for like all these Somerset cheddars. So oh, wow. it's like the only place in that area that has access. Cause usually people buy cultures online. Like you mm -hmm. order like powdered culture or whatever. It's kind of like, it's like yeast mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, like yeah, stirred yeah. Baggy. water mm -hmm. and then you, yeah, put it over the milk and everything. Yeah. Um, but they but keep yeah. their own and grow their own and cultivate their own cultures. Right. They like get it from the milk and keep it. And mm. yeah, so they can't, so they cannot use powder cultures in barbers. They only use the cultures that they save in their lab. They do not buy anything online. All from natural. That's yeah. awesome. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as I mentioned earlier, even though the name cheddar cheese isn't protected, there is a term that is protected, and it is West Country Farmhouse Cheddar. And Barbers 1833 is a... West Country Farmhouse. West, Cheddar. West Country, Country Farmhouse. Cheddar. I feel like it's some sort of chant. So yeah. West Country Farmhouse Cheddar. West Country. And <laughs> Jessica, you asked which one it is. I know it's hard to distinguish Sorry, the cheddars. Yeah. The uh, Barber's is the smaller yes. triangle on yes. your plate. The smaller, smaller four shape. pieces. Yep. yep. You didn't know this was going to be a geometry lesson. No, exactly. I saw some these. Some <laughs> these. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. hard. But the yeah. smaller yeah. triangle barber is the 1833. Yeah. And yes, Jennifer, delicious. I'm with you. This can be a go-to too. And again, mm -hmm. not an expensive cheese or cheddar, mm -hmm. but delicious. Yeah. Oh. And mm -hmm. then there is certain criteria for it to be oh, West, West Country, country. Yeah, <laughs> Cheddar. <laughs> um, they have to use the traditional methods. They have to be hand turned mm -hmm. in the vat. Um, they have to be aged at least nine months. They have to, do you remember any, Rachel? No. Okay. Um, I'll look at my notes. <laughs> Somebody, anyone, anyone, anyone? Um, I have it. Oh, oh, and they can't be made no more than thirty miles from the farm. Mm. And oh, that's the farmhouse part of it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it, oh, oh, only in one of four counties in Southwest England. So it's like exclusive, not, very exclusive. Yeah. Which I love it. I love the exclusivity. Like mm. this might be a, a fun time to jump in and give like just some slight history because um, Somerset. This is what we're talking about, right? The West Country. Yeah. So they are now like the primary producers in England of cheddar and were oh. um, after World War II. But before that, I think um, it was East Anglia. It was a different part, like Sussex, Essex. They were the places that were producing all the cheddar. Mm -hmm. But what happened was they were sending their cheddar off to market. This is before World War II. Um, and butter was getting a higher price oh. than, than oh, wow. the cheese was. So yeah. they started skimming their milk t to make more butter and try to have it on both ends. Ah. So they would try to take the butter and then they would make some sort of like low fat, you know, cheese, like part skim cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and then people were like, this doesn't taste no. good anymore. So yeah. it kind of like switched to the Somerset area, became the primary producer of cheddar, sending it to London. They do a lot of cheddar, I think. Like yeah, lots of cheddar. Yeah. We, just yeah. knowing how much we alone, this little shop gets. Imagine across the world, yeah, across yeah. You know, England yeah. and the world, right? Mm. And speaking of World War II, before World War II, there was about 3,500 uh, independent cheesemakers. And then after World War II, it was less than 100. What? And it's because the government was rationing um, their food supply because, um, you know, Great Britain, it's like an island. And so their food was imported and German submarines were trying to attack the ship so no food so they can starve the population. And so they said, okay, we have to ration food. You guys can only make cheddar and only certain types of cheddar. And they called wow. it government cheese. Government cheese. Yeah. Wow. And I didn't know that. I thought no. that, was, that was interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. And, and it, the ban lasted for nine years. So it wasn't until like 1954, I believe, wow. that now they can make other cheese. But like think of how much was lost. And that's why it's impressive that these cheese companies, uh, the producers um, are using the original cultures because it wasn't lost during the war. Yeah. Like two so wars, at it. you know, if you think right. about it. Oh, that's awesome. So. Mm. Cheddar. All right, All right now, rustic or barbers, which one is better? Ooh, okay, yes. Can anyone chime in? Rustic or barbers? Ooh, am I gonna chime in? <laughs> Even though rustic red mm. is technically younger than the mm -hmm. barbers, I feel like rustic's sharper. I feel that the barbers is sweeter. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. lean yeah. toward rustic being sharper. Yeah. I actually like the barbers a little better. I don't know. Just Going barbers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the rustic because it makes me think of like a cheeseburger. <laughs> <It's like laughs> burger. Somebody's a cheeseburger. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's very cavey to me. I get some sort of 
stone smell oh, from yeah, We should from be rustic. smelling the cheese too. We should be. Which I love. Like it, it smells, smells like, like a cave. And I know I can't wait till we get to one of the truck. And I've got to vote on that too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I love that stone cave mm -hmm. mineral. mineral. And I think yeah. rustic has that. But I think Barber's with that sweetness. Mm -hmm. And that little crunch, teeniest bit of crunch is mm -hmm. awesome. So far we've got. Barbers, Barbers, slightly more. So Bar yeah. Barbers, Barbers, across the board. Jennifer, Tracy, Aurora, and Ryan. Barbers, Barbers, All voted Barbers. Barbers. Right. Maybe we Barbers. should put the Barbers in a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's not orange. Yeah. <laughs> Husband likes rustic and uh, wife likes Barber for Laurel. Well, that's good. Then you're not going to fight over the cheese. Right. You're going to have your own and you won't have to fight each other for it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so, the, those, so the ones we talked about, the rustic red and the Barbers, those are both block, like you mentioned, mm. cheddars. Mm -hmm. Here, I like um, this. Yeah, so this is a Quebec vintage, oh, sorry, but, but yes. this is a three-year, not the seven-year that you're tasting, but it looks the same shape. And so it's vacuum sealed in that plastic, and that helps um, the like preserve it. But that's typically what you would see at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, it helps it not be exposed to air, and it keeps the cheese, I think, moist inside mm -hmm. and smooth. And um, dense and fudgy, those are the two adjectives Ooh, I like. Dense a good and word. Fudgy, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And then, of course, you can buy it shredded or sliced or sticks in the store, but you need to be aware of like the preservatives that are added to the shredded cheese. It's going to keep it from melting evenly, and your gratin deserves better than that. You need to <laughs> buy whole blocks of cheese and create it yourself, and so that way you have evenly melted cheese. So that is my third tidbit of the night. So only the third. Only the there's third. a bunch of you there's have a bunch of tidbits. Yeah. I do, I do, I do. And then there's also wax covered cheddar, which oh, um, yeah. we have red dragon here, and you can see it's the red wax and then the cheese inside, and then um, the porter oh. cheddar there too, which is really pretty. It's like completely marble. That's inside. where you can see the curds, truly see. Those yeah. are just cheddar curds pressed together in the porter beer. So that mm -hmm. gives you a the good visual of what we say when we just press curds together. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I haven't had that for so long, and then the Oh, red dragon, the red dragon so with the good. mustard yeah. seed. That's super good. Yeah. That's good melted on a burger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> off the I mean, they all are, but yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't, it's not as like greasy because it's a good younger cheddar, so it doesn't mm -hmm. like have that. Yeah, That's that true, melts. that little puddle. Mm -hmm. And then there's also cloth bound cheddars, which I'll have Rachel talk a little bit about that. Yes, because we've done the two bricks <laughs> now, right? So now we're going yeah. to cloth bound. That's a whole different world of cheddar, right? There's so many styles of cheddar. So exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, this is oh. Montgomery's cheddar. This one, the stick, you see the rind at the end. Um, it is a cloth bound cheddar, which is what they do is when they make it, they put it instead of these big blocks, they put it in like a hoop, like a circular hoop vat situation. Mm -hmm. They coat it in cloth and then they rub it down with lard. So it's I a good mean, thing. Come on. <laughs> what is not to love? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it helps the lard helps um, the cloth stick, but mostly prevents anything from getting inside. It helps with moisture loss. Although it is going to be a little drier than the brick cheddars because of like the vacuum sealing and everything. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. still some moisture loss through that like semi permeable mm -hmm. kind of cloth that they use. Um, yes. But you should what definitely a, smell this one. Oh, this one, yeah. yeah. I, it has so many layers of smell. And this is where you get, I love the sharpness and the cleanness and the sweetness of the cheddars mm -hmm. we've tried. Mm -hmm. But when you get into these wheels and the cloth bound and the cave aged, you get a whole different flavor profile, mm -hmm. but yet they are still cheddar because they're made in that yeah. same fashion. It's so crazy they can be so different. But the smell of this is like a cave. Yeah. It's like licking a cave wall, and that's why I <laughs> yes, love this mineral. cheese. That's how I, I think love. of like those really minerally, like either Greek wipes or New Zealand. Yes, that's the same. Blocks. That's true. It's like you're licking rocks. It's like, <laughs> I love it. Too. <laughs> Give me another one. Um, and you can actually see. So these are enormous wheels. Um, I forget how many pounds mm. they are, but they're they're mm -hmm. quite big. And if 60. you look at the color differential between like close to the rind and on the inside, it's a little darker close to the rind. It gets a little yeah. kind of whiter inside and the flavor is quite different. So when you're cha uh, tasting a cheese like this, you know, taste the, like definitely taste near the rind, definitely taste yeah. near the rind. It, the flavor gets a lot more intense near the rind. And that's true of most cheeses. Mm. Um, but it's just interesting to kind of have the flavor differential there. Exactly. And the fact that it's not sharp. I think we're so accustomed yeah. to that traditional sharp cheddar. Mm -hmm. These cheddars are not. Mm -hmm. They typically don't have those characteristics. So 
somebody might be disappointed if they're mm -hmm. expecting a sharp cheddar and they don't get that. But oh, yeah, I, it just depends what you're looking for. I yeah. like it better closer to the rind. You closer do? Rind? I do. A little sharper? Yeah. yeah. A little, little something. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you it's can eat the rind. It's large. earthy. It's earthy. It's earthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. so, so many layers. So Montgomery's is, I think, mm. kind of widely known as like the cheesemonger's favorite cheddar. It's King just, of all cheddars. King yeah. of all cheddars. The king. <laughs> um, you can call it Monty's, whatever. Oh, we yeah. know what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, and it's just so fun. And one of the reasons it's so fun is that every wheel is different and they use different, um, a different culture blend. Apparently every day of the week. I, did I didn't know that. that. I didn't that's know that That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that every wheel tastes differently and that's one of the exciting things. It's like, it's always incredible, but are you going to get like a mind blowing one? Or are you going to yes. get like something that you just haven't tasted before? Um, it's Isn't great. that the beauty of it that you yes. never know until you taste the wheel, what you're going to get. Right. It's not consistent with these. It's going to be consistent mm -hmm. with 1833, mm -hmm. and except the age part, which right. uh, some right. of them could right. be a little different. But these ones, you're right. Yeah, you just so never fun. know from one wheel to the next. But that makes it kind of fun and cool. It's always an adventure. So uh, one of the, our viewers, Laurel, says she's getting something vegetal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like um, green. I'm going to get the, see if I get the veggies. Or, like or mushroom. forest. Mushroom. Or like, see, yeah, mm -hmm. she said forest, you say mushroom. So yeah, that's exactly it's that kind of damp. <laughs> I know, day. you yeah. describe something as that. I know, only in the world of cheese are these right. words okay. And mm -hmm. beer. Be <laughs> and beer, that's true. I was going to say beefy, almost. Beefy, yeah. you're good mm -hmm. beefy. I mean, okay. there's lard, I mean, not, not cow lard, but, you know, lard, lard. But, mm -hmm. you know, lard. there you go, mm -hmm. lard. Um, yeah. And um, one of the, I guess, apparently all the Montgomery cheddar that comes to the United States is imported through Neil's Yard Dairy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yep. Um, but there's, they're a quality shop in, yeah. in London. They... Oh age amazing cheeses they choose all of them we get our colston bassett stilton from them it, it's my favorite stilton i mean it's they just by, do such right yeah. i mean kind of can't compare it's yeah <laughs> i hate to be like that king of, yeah. Yeah. england has many kings in the cheese world and in the yes uh, they're, they're full of kings um tracy asked hello tracy about um the rosemary She's getting a flavor of rosemary on it. it. It definitely, Tracy, could be that your rosemary was sleeping around <laughs> here with your Montgomery's for a while and soaked in a little bit of scandalous. scandalous. Well, that's a thing of kings. That's the nature of the kings, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, so yes. true. Um, Tracy, I, I highly recommend eating, and everybody, a little of the rosemary, a little, does, a little thing. Does. I love this. Yeah. I We're love it. We're calling you rosemary. Call me rosemary. <laughs> I should be named rosemary. Eat the rosemary with the cheese. It's such a fabulous yeah. herb with cheese, but yeah. it's probably because it just, it's not in the rind, but I'm sure it soaked up a little of that flavor. It really is so good. But I love it together. Yeah. There is one cheese, Tracy, you would love to know. In the spring, hopefully we'll get it again. It comes from France. It's called Rove de Garrigue. They're little goat balls. I can't say it, it's not real goat. They're balls of goat cheese. <laughs> um, and the goats graze on nothing but rosemary. So when you just eat this and, and spread it, mm. it's like you're eating rosemary milk and wow. it's so delicious. Rosemary That's milk. the only time that I've noticed where a cheese truly wow. takes on rosemary yeah. because yeah, that's I what we get it too. Eats. That sounds good. So good. Ooh. We haven't for a few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. We won't talk about the years, but hopefully next year <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah. That's funny. And speaking of kings, the cows allegedly graze on the land that is King Arthur's Camelot. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I'm so involved with so that. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a fun tidbit. Yeah. I love that. And then going back to like cave age cheddars. So um, I want to talk about Cheddar Gorge. Yes. So outside of the village of Cheddar, they have all these natural caves where they age the cheddar. And, and the caves are special because it has a cool temperature, which allows cheeses to age um, evenly and a high humidity, which keeps the cheese moist. And so uh, Cheddar Gorge is like a famous place where they do that. Yeah. Cool. And then Wookiee Pole, I think it's another what? one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to go with Cheddar Did Gorge. you say Wookiee? Like, <laughs> it's W-O-O-K-E-Y. How else would you say that? I-E. Is that Wookiee? E-Y. 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 Wookiee. Wookie. Yeah. Wait, Wookiee. <laughs> Maybe? Someone will be like, oh, really? let us know. This is on the internet forever. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> That's another cave. That's it's another right. famous cave. Right. Okay, that's, that's right. so interesting too. So many good tidbits. And how long can cheddar be aged for? Oh. So cave aged cheddars. So 
there is not really a limit, but there is a caveat to some of it. So cage age can't age longer than 10 years because the natural mm-hmm. rind will deteriorate. Mm-hmm. Wax cheddar will last about 25 years. And the blocks, like, forever. I read an article about a guy who, like, found, this is supposed to be the oldest cheddar. It's 40 years. He what? had, like, a small little cheese-making operation going on, went out of business, and then he found a case in the back of his fridge <laughs> and he's like I can eat that yeah and then he's like it's from Wisconsin and he was like oh it's so good and then another guy's like uh, it's extremely sharp and you should just eat just a very little bit and the guy's like yeah just eat the whole thing it's fine but I can't imagine a 40 year old 40 years I old I mean we're gonna taste 12 and it like I mean it's hard to eat a lot of it mm-hmm. I think, but you we'll get there yeah um one more quick thing about Montgomery's if you mm-hmm. don't mind Please. And I know you have a bunch of other tidbits. No, you're fine. You're good. Pop in <laughs> good. I guess. Um, and we didn't have any that we saw. So this is this is Monty's oh. right here. Mm-hmm. And like you said, that's only about an eighth of the wheel, right? Yeah, yeah because yes. you cut it in half. You yeah. can see the cloth there. But um, sometimes they have that blue vein. Oh, talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And people, they have it in Keynes is mm-hmm. another one. Mm-hmm. Um, Lincolnshire. Like, oh, sure. Yeah, exactly. Kirkham's Lancashire. Yeah. Oh, these, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just happens naturally. So um, it happens because of the environment that they're aging it in, has some sort of penicillium in it, and it just happens. Um, it doesn't super alter the flavor, and it's completely fine to eat. Yeah. Some people love it. Some people think, oh no, I don't want this is like mold. <laughs> I don't want this on there. But some people actually like look for it and want that piece of it because sometimes it's, it's highly a little prized more, a yeah, little bit, right? Like mm-hmm. intensely flavored around that area. But in any case, if you get a cloth brown cheddar, there's a little bit of a blue vein, completely fine to eat. In fact, yes. very fun to eat, would recommend. Yes. So. You know, when yeah. I first tried good it, good it, good it tasted like blue. That was the first thing I said. Or oh, you like, did? Yeah. Blue. It's kind of like blue. I don't cheese. like blue. Uh, but but yeah. now it does not taste like that. So it's interesting, like different. It'll yeah. Change. It's crazy. It just changes. I love it. I love it. That's a great tip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Montgomery mm-hmm. also uses the old peg mill still too. That's crazy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it, it, is it like a? Yeah. Like like a, a, yeah. 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 Wow. And that's like yeah. the causes like um part of like the brittleness in the cheese too, which is that that method. Yeah. And I just love the old style, old techniques. I think that makes it so special. It's one of the, my favorite things. About it the does the hand, yeah, craftness of it or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. is just. No, ah, there's something to be said for yeah. that. Yeah. It's like when you, in your Alpine class, when you talked about like the Alpage mm-hmm. cheeses. Right. It's just like they're like hand making the cheese. In the copper vat. In the, like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very good. Mm. So we've done. I think I like that one the best. The Monty? Really? Because yeah. you don't really love it the first time you yeah. I know, I know. Uh-huh. So I'm like uh-huh. surprised I'm awesome. And I like these cherries with all it's, the cheddars. Me too, and it's really good with the Montgomery's. And we were just talking about the cherries actually come from um, the cherries? Michigan. These come from. Mm-hmm. We oh. determined the mm-hmm. other night. Yes, that Michigan is oh, where they're from because kind of the capital. I thought it was Washington State with cherries, but no, no, I was putting my place <laughs> in Michigan. I thought you were asking so, what the capital of Michigan was. I was like, is it? What is it? Oh, Lansing? I think Lansing. I was going to say Lansing. So I know. Wow. I panicked. I was like, is this <laughs> a Lansing? Okay, okay. So these are from Michigan. This is the important. Yeah. Ah, so Laurel has a good question about if you're allergic to penicillin, do you need to avoid blue cheeses? No. You're fine. No. Because no. it's too different. Exactly. It's very different. So it is a Roquefort, Roqueforti penicillium kind of culture mold inside. But wow, Lauren, you would have to eat... I don't know how much. <laughs> Why don't you try? <laughs> you have to eat a lot to have a, a, a symptom to it. But some people I have heard, um, for me it's the kiwi. I'm a little bit allergic to kiwi. Oh, no, if I, I eat that. it, I, I get this little tickle in the mm-hmm. very back of my throat. Some people that eat blue cheese get the same if they're allergic to penicillin, mm-hmm. but you're fine. So there's never been a case of, no. yeah, yeah. Of, of, of something bad there. So you're okay yeah. with that there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> And you can enjoy cheese at any time during the aging process, but I do want to go over like what it's typically. So mild is like one to three months, and it's going to be like smooth, mellow, a um, little sweet. And then there's semi-sharp, which is three to six months, and that's when it gets that tang, like that, that little tang of sharpness. Yeah, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have sharp matured, which is six to 12 months, and then you're gonna get this robust, um, they'll start to crumble a little bit more and then after that anything aged after that is going to be vintage cheddar and so that's when it's like super strong mm-hmm. gonna crumble kind of dry um, you're gonna get those crystals in it um, 
which we're going to taste. The next two cheeses we're going to taste are considered vintage. Say, should we talk about the crystals? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So the crystals, so there are two different types of crystals on cheddar. The mm -hmm. crystals inside are the same crystals that you get in a Gouda or some of those Alpine mm -hmm. cheeses. Like we have a 30-month-aged Comte that has ah. the same crystals in it. Those are tyrosine crystals. They're amino acid crystals that just form as part of the cheese-making process. So some people think they're salt crystals. Some people, you know, other things. Um, it's actually an amino acid, and it is delightful and delicious <laughs> it and is. perfect. Um, but then you <laughs> yes. also get crystals on the outside, and actually this doesn't have it. Oh, the hook does. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you can see that on white. On the outside yeah. of the, these, like, block cheddars specifically that don't have a rind, and that's calcium lactate, these white things here. And it's completely normal. And in the more aged cheddars, you're going to get a lot more of it. I mean, you can, like, scrape it off because they are crunchy. I love them. You love them, right? Yes. With yeah. them. Um, but it is different. I just think it's interesting that crystals can form in different places for different reasons on different cheeses. So I didn't know about yeah. the outside. Like I knew yeah. it was like calcium something, but I didn't put it together in my head. Yeah, so. and some people yeah. are like, "What's this? Like I don't like I don't want that. Break that off. You know, that not a because you eat that part. So yes. people are this like good understandably stuff. more concerned and interested. Yeah, yeah. it's worth a taste. Worth yeah. the and you will get some on this. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. All right. Um, Oh, we have a Tracy a question. So you guys can we can all taste and decide what's our opinion on rosemary with the wine. Oh, Ooh, heard it impacts the wine taste. Tracy, this is a problem. I love rosemary and I love wine, so I think I will, I'm going to like it regardless. It uh -huh. Yeah, way. but maybe in a positive because again, I need to like eat a cracker. It's meant to be with food, right? So wow, but this rosemary is intense. <laughs> We're going to test Tracy. I don't know if you're testing too. Let us know what you think. We'll tell you what we think. Oh, we'll tell you. Oh, I love that. To me, the rosemary completely overtakes the wine, though. But afterwards, it's mm -hmm. like very... It's all fine together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of foods. I think it, it depends on the food and the wine of how impactful one will be to the other. Mm -hmm. We've noticed that so often. Sometimes mm -hmm. we eat a cheese and a wine, and suddenly the wine disappears. You never even could yeah. taste it or opposite yeah. happens. So it's always worth um, exploring and tasting yourself. Yeah. yeah, to see, like, hey, this doesn't do it for me, or this really kills it, or wow, this is really good together. I love these two together. Yeah, both I cold. love it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go try the basil blossoms. Ooh, too. she said, oh, did you, oh, tell us what this is. Oh, basil blossoms, and it smells just like, well, like smell it, everybody. Like, Hopefully you all, oh, that smells ooh, yeah. so good. Like, so this is like the top pesto, of it. Which, like yeah. a pesto, yeah, who doesn't like that, yeah. right? The basil blossom, if you have that on your plate, and do I see, oh, it? what do we have here? Oh, ooh. A little bit of, um, oh, spicy. A little bit. A little bit. I love it. Is it? Woo! Yeah. Good Herbs thing. are good. Herbs are good. Not meant to detract, meant to cleanse. And it does cleanse yes. the palate. Definitely. Yes. I didn't right. expect it to be so strong. It's good, but it's strong. And then you can even eat the flowers if you feel inclined to. Yeah, yeah. You, you feel you want to. Everyone's yeah. loving the science, Rachel, of the crystals. Very oh, good. Yeah. Important. Yeah. And some of those hooks sometimes come completely white. Yeah. And it does look scary. You're like, is this bad? Yeah. You know, should I be eating this? And the answer is... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would Please. say only be concerned if there's like ballooning in the obviously uh, like any sort of red we talked yeah. about this before, kind of green looking molds. Mm -hmm. No thank you. But yeah. any ballooning in the vacuum packaging, mm -hmm. it's kinda nice that you have it because then you can see it if there's any problems mm -hmm. with yeah. that sort of thing. It can be the same like gas blowing bacteria that makes yeah. those holes in the oh, Swiss yeah. cheese. Yeah. So right. The which you don't want on a cheddar. Yeah. Defect. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Right. Very good. But that time. Oh, so now we're going to the big oh, triangle. Yeah. Is that yeah. correct? And then mine has those little calcium things that we were talking about. Oh, yeah, mine too. So the bigger triangle, everybody, yeah. on your plate. We're going to Canada now. Quebec. Across the ocean. Mmm. I'm going to Canada, eh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. I get the crunch. of French yeah. Canada. Mm-hmm. Which Weed. the French actually make, like, cheddar type cheeses what is it cantal and i don't know how to say the other right cantal mm -hmm. cantalador oh oh so it, it, no it looks like sales yeah I but, know. It's just sales. Oh, so, okay. but it looks like sale it, it literally spells s-a-l-e-s mm -hmm. but I, I think you just pronounce it sal mm -hmm. oh yeah um oh yeah this definitely follows along the lines of canta cantal mm -hmm. cantalador and sals yeah super very um so creamy. Yes. Yeah. Creamy. And very assertive tang to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, I would call this very sharp. And you said yes. this was how many years? So this is a seven year mm -hmm. um, from Quebec, Canada. It is aged in Pennsylvania. In Lancaster. 
for yes. all my Pennsylvania uh, What? Oh yeah, that's right. Out there. there may be some. You never know. know. I am from there, so. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and they offer a three year, seven year, and 10 year. And so we typically have the three year. Right now we have the seven year. So if you love this, get it while you can. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this cheese is that it has a very unique production process. So it the milk is um, unpasteurized, but it's heat treated. And so that heat treatment doesn't eradicate all the bacteria. It keeps the healthy bacteria, which is what allows for that sharpness you get in cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's cool. That is cool. <laughs> the starter culture most used in cheddar cheese is lactobacillus lacti. As far as I know, just I'm not going to spell that when everybody's listen to Rachel again. <laughs> um, say that, but anyway, oh, you're talking about mm -hmm. cultures. So yes, yes, yes. I pop in, <laughs> and then it goes through a very like excruciating grading mm -hmm. process. So they make the cheese, so good. they grade it the first week, and they're like the aroma, the texture, the color, everything. And if it passes the vibe check, it moves on, and they check it another 90 days later. And then if it passes that, they'll cut the block into um, smaller pieces and then check it nine months later. And then if it's good, it gets to cross the border into Pennsylvania and that's where they'll age it. And then or keep it aging. eight years, seven years, uh, 10 years. I didn't even know that, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I just love that they make sure that they only release good the quality, best of the, the best the best of the best yeah. yeah and we've talked about that in other classes too that sort of grading i mean we talked mm -hmm. about like i think pascal bever with the goat mm -hmm. cheese and mm -hmm. the alpines and do you even neil's yard like these are people who are like grading the different cheeses and only taking the best of the best and the gourmino yeah. right Did we talk oh about the gourmino yeah the gourmino yeah it's like oh, so yeah. you start to like tend to look to these like producers for like quality products because you know they're doing the grading like quebec is exactly. that they're just taking exactly. the best ones to age yes. Yes. yes so when you get that seven year piece you know yeah, it's going to be yeah. Fan yeah. fabulous yeah I can't mm -hmm. imagine, like, imagine people who are working there, like, seven years ago, and then seven years later, and, like, There's they might not even be there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I mean, where were you seven years ago? And that cheese is just hanging out, aging, and getting getting good. And this is right? sharp, and I can't imagine Pretty a ten-year one. I've not had the ten-year Quebec, only seven. I haven't either. Mm -hmm. so, look yeah. out for it. Yeah, we'll try to get it. But I love that sharp. This is a classic mm -hmm. when you think sharp cheddar, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. right? This one has nailed that flavor. It is. Mm -hmm. I like this one the best so far. Ah, so this is yours. Yeah. The Beck Vintage. Oh, I'm like um, do you know, Mark asks, um, why aging in a different location? Why don't they age in Canada? Do you know? Is there a reason or is it just a um, collaboration? I think it's a collaboration in the space. Mm -hmm. Yep, space, space too. Space is usually I wonder if it's cheaper if you import cheeses like before age, because you know, you get moisture loss. So they were talking a lot about that in ah, the, the history weight. of cheddar, because yeah. uh -huh. you get mm -hmm. paid for the weight. So I wonder if you're importing them before they're super aged, they have more moisture, oh. they weigh more, so you're getting paid for more. I don't know the agreement between the exactly. <laughs> so bring the and the, and the yeah. um, cheese makers, but it just is interesting because you do get moisture loss as cheeses age, and so you end sure. up, you know, it's having less weight, yeah. and so that's less money. Ah, I super don't know. Yeah. I, um, that's good, Mark. We'll have to find out yes, on this we will. instance <laughs> why that is, because that's a that's news to me that it was not aged in Canada as well. Yeah, and that's really hard because now there's a lot of cheeses that somebody makes, yeah. but then someone else ages. The Crown yeah. Caves of in, in Brooklyn, oh, they're yeah. aging yes, the for so we just many. Got in. Right, yeah. well, it was made in Italy, but they're aging it in Brooklyn. Well, where is that cheese from? You know, yes, I still exactly. think it's from the maker. I feel yeah. like the maker does so much of the work, but so much of flavor and everything comes yeah. from how a cheese is aged. So you're seeing more and more of that sharing. It may be a sharing of costs. Um, you know, uh, yeah, because then that the cheese maker himself has to make room for more cheese. You have to constantly be yeah. be churning it out. So it's yeah. interesting. It's um, lamb choppers like that too. Lamb chopper, exactly. And That's a good one too. Al Blossom is oh, another Al one. Blossom? Yeah, really it's like good points. Austria and Germany, I believe, right? Uh, yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, 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 Austria yeah, yeah. and Germany, made in wait, 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 uh, made in Germany, aged in Al Alp. <laughs> put the blossoms on in Austria. Oh, yeah. 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 Can you write it from Austria? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, Aurora asked, um, maybe you could touch on, you know, is this considered a sharp cheddar? And again, why it makes it sharp? What makes that sharp flavor? So mm -hmm. seven years, so it's aged. So the longer it ages, the sharper it will be. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of the acidity. So mm -hmm. you, 
yeah, the higher the acidity, the more you get that sharp taste. So they add, so we were kind of talking about cultures earlier, and there are kind of two times you would add cultures. The first time is when you're, when you have the milk and you're putting cultures into the milk, and those are called starter cultures, and that's gonna give you, what that's gonna do is speed up the acidification. So you might give a certain culture for cheddar because you want it to get really acidic so that you're gonna get this sharp flavor mm -hmm. as it ages, which it will become sharper and it will become more acidic, and that starter culture helps kind of bump it up and make the pH go down, mm -hmm. which is more Makes acidic. Makes the acid go up. Right, and yeah. then the second time, but if you're doing an alpine, you add a different starter culture. You add the Helveticus, mm -hmm. it makes it kind of sweet. It doesn't necessarily bump up the acidity. It kind of keeps it, you know. Mellow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then the second time is like, an they call it an adjunct culture, which you might add in the beginning or later, and that's more for flavor, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, so different people have different proprietary kind of like cultures Lens, that maybe, they yeah. use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so as far as I know, it's like a combination of yeah. the aging and the starter culture that you use that makes it more acidic. More acidic. It's just, it's fascinating. It's like wine because they're, it's just like, wine is grapes, but what they do with those grapes in these, all the, you put it in oak, you put it in stainless, yeah. you, yeah. You, uh, you age it for this long, you do this and this, makes it all different. It's exactly the same with Crazy. cheese. It all starts with milk, like but go. yet you do slightly different techniques along the way and you get a completely different cheese. So it's just, it is, it's just it, it, little tweaks. That's where science meets art, right, together. Yeah, because totally. you need the pH, you need the acid, mm -hmm. you got to get that mm -hmm. right. Cheese is like baking, it's a scientific, you got to yeah. get this right. It's not like just, woohoo, I'm in the kitchen cooking. Mm -hmm. Cheese is a little more scientific than that, but then the artistry comes yeah. to make it really something unique. So we have so many comments. Okay, so... Then based on uh, oh the number of years, so Aurora can be some sharp cheddars can be just one year old mm -hmm. because they maybe started with more acid to begin with. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that after ten years it'd be the sharpest. It depends how it even started with the acid. Right. So it's very interesting on this, um, and there are no specific rules, Tracy, of when a cheese can be called sharp, mm -hmm. and what one person thinks is sharp, another one thinks is yeah. sweet. This is what's really yeah, hard. Like the when rustic red, I think, is super sharp. You think it's really sharp, yeah. But yeah. It's the youngest one on the go figure. Tray. Go yeah. figure, yeah, yeah. The youngest one, and, sh and she thinks it's sharp. So there are no rules for that. That's a personal uh, taste bud. Mm -hmm. um, and then Laurel asked about the aging location affecting a flavor. And a location can, oh, yeah, if it's in a cave, mm -hmm. a dank cave that has, you know, spores and things floating about. You're going to get a different mm -hmm. flavor yeah, than yeah. if it's in kind of a sterile room. Or something. Yeah, I mean, there are stories yeah. of it being aged in specific caves or specific rooms, and then I can't remember the specific cheese, of course. Mm -hmm. And then them moving like a couple states over in the U.S. and trying to make the same cheese and yeah, do it because the, yeah. the ambient bacteria was different. Yeah, I mean, it's mm -hmm. crazy. That's yeah. where it's like science, but also like you can't like measure what you have in a room. Well, you right. can in different ways, but like yes. you have to kind of just go with it. Mm -hmm. And it will always taste different, regardless. Because the milk came out, tastes different th from the start. The milk yeah. from the winter to the spring to the fall yeah, can taste true. completely different. So right there, you're going to get a different flavor to that cheese without even having done anything. It, that yeah. just happened recently. I had the Midnight Moon. I'm you like, did. why is this what? so much better? And then I realized the milk. It's milk. from it's spring milk. Was it spring milk? It was. And, and I was like, you taste the difference. Taste it. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's that's a whole nother subject. Yes, that's which is what why they're eating. Yeah. when you come into the cheese shop, ask the cheesemonger, what's tasting good right now? Because yes. we're tasting all these wheels. So like, we'll taste yeah. the wheel of Midnight Moon and be like, it's not like we we ever don't like Midnight Moon. Yeah. Right, like right. The so wheel you'll taste are like, oh, love Midnight Moon. Yes, right. Yes, yes. Or Gruyere. I mean, some yes. of the famous oh, yes. ones, you taste them and you go, yes. no, this one's okay, or this one is just pleasant, or this one's sharp, this one is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I first started, so those cheeses I tried, and I'm like, oh, it's okay, and then I try it now, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't I know? Right, right. So. No, it's so, so, so good. So yes, location plays a factor, everything plays a factor in making a cheese taste as it does, for sure. I was laughing earlier because you were like, earlier we were talking about cultures, and I'm like, we just sound like a bunch of cheese. <laughs> we were, we were so we are. Nerds, nerds, curd nerds. All right, I'm going to put my vote in on the Kikos, because Tracy yes. too, and I agree. Tracy, I'm with you. It tastes like popcorn. It's like you're kind of eating popcorn <laughs> with Chocolate it. Chocolate-covered popcorn? Yeah. Is that I don't good know or bad? I think it's good. Okay. I'm, I'm going with the good. I think it's a kind of a fun, sweet treat. I'm, I'm dying to taste 
against these chocolates in a minute, mm -hmm. but I'm liking it with the Kikos and Tracy. Yes, I'm with you on the popcorn. Funny, right? <laughs> yeah, those things are popcorn. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we got one more question from Aurora. Yeah. Um, how do the cheese makers, like the ones in the grocery store, reproduce the exact thing over and over? Oh yeah, so how do they get their cheese to always, always taste the same? Versus, say, Montgomery's, which we know always, always tastes different. Well, Montgomery's is trying to get it to always taste different, yeah. to be fair. So they're switching up their culture blend and they have their cows eating grass. So the grasses are different yeah. based mm -hmm. on, you know, how much it's rain, what it's in the environment, etc. But um, as far as I know, like the, the grocery store kind of cheddars, they get it to taste the same by using the exact same mm -hmm. cultures and they'll buy it. Again, this sounds bad, like you can't, you can buy everything online. It doesn't, they're good cultures. It's <laughs> yes, just like, exactly. They're getting the exact same cultures from Every the exact same place time. and doing yeah. the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're sealing it in plastic wrap, which mm -hmm. is keeping any of the ambient bacteria like you don't get blue veining in grocery store cheese ever mm -hmm. even super aged like you know i love cabot i love tillamook whenever i'm buying like a, delicious a, you know mm -hmm. just like to cook mm -hmm. with or even to snack with i get those too because they're like dairy cooperatives so they're getting milk from small farms it's all right great. but anyway so as far as i know that's how they reproduce mm -hmm. it they literally just do the exact same thing mm -hmm. and they're yeah. aging it in a very mm -hmm. like secure enclosed environment the same environment every time mm -hmm. yes and their cows are eating the same things <laughs> every time and they do it in such massive quantities, quantities. yeah massive quantities yeah. versus smaller batches yeah cloth bound cheddars are going to be very limited quantities <laughs> yeah 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 get too much of those so, and there's nothing wrong with either i sometimes yeah. i want to know it's like going to starbucks i want even Starbucks, is, it's hard. You get a cappuccino from one Starbucks, yeah. tastes different from a cappuccino in another yes. Starbucks. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you just want it to taste the what it does. Yeah. Yeah. If I want my McDonald's fries, I know they're going to taste like my mm -hmm. McDonald's fry. Yeah. So with the cheddars too, I know that my bar Barber's is going to taste the way yeah. Barber's tastes. And I love that. And I mm -hmm. know when I want that flavor, I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. Montgomery's, i got to taste the wheel and decide, oh, yeah, I, today I feel like this one. Mm -hmm. Totally. So yeah. that's why you got to taste. It's so much fun to come taste. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Right. Best Great for questions. Last. I know. I know. I love that. Yeah, I can't keep up. Yeah. <laughs> are we going on? Are we going to the last one? Ooh, we are. The Let's blow out it. your taste buds. Uh, end of the night. <laughs> the end of the night. <laughs> like, in your face, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hooks twelve hooks. years. Twelve years, you guys. Okay, twelve years. Where were you twelve years ago? What what year was that? Somebody did the math. I'm not good at math. Get so into that. Oh, uh, I don't do math. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do math. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. Where were we? Yeah. Okay, I can tell you though. Where? Here. Where, where were you? We just moved into this space at Flower Hill in oh, Del Mar wow. in 2009. Because it was 2007. We were in the other little space. 2009 was this space. So that was when this cheddar was born. Yeah. My daughter just had her fifth birthday. Oh, your daughter had her fifth yeah. birthday. So. Mm -hmm. Which, oh my God. Okay, real quick. Totally off topic. She was five-year-old birthday party. I invited the whole kindergarten class. All their parents came. There was over a hundred people. <gasps> That's too many people. That's a lot. Long. <laughs> Did you serve them hooks? Uh, <laughs> no, but it was Halloween themed, so everyone was in their costume. Uh, and then the chips were black and orange for Halloween. Uh, I made the gummy worms and pudding, like worms and dirt. Yes, dirt. Oh, and dirt, then yeah. my favorite I wrapped <laughs> the juice boxes in white electrical tape and put googly eyes so they look like mummies because I'm extra. So. You're very, yeah. yeah. Sometimes so. we have to call Christina tableside guacamole in a very <laughs> loving way. Like everything has to be extra, you know, and we appreciate that. If it's not tableside, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> If it's not hooks 12 year, I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it. I can't be bothered. All right. Yeah. Wow, that is super sharp. Yes, yes. You're right. I can, how much of that could you eat? You can't eat, I could not eat that whole thing. I could eat this whole thing, but I can't eat this whole yeah. pile. It's good, but yeah. Just so yeah. So it's from Oops. Mineral Point, Wisconsin, which Wisconsin produces the most cheddar cheese in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, hooks has been producing cheese for 45 years. They're... Um, high school sweethearts, I think Tony yeah. and Julie. Uh huh. And uh, what's really cool is that their Colby cheese in 1982 won uh, finest cheese in the world at the World Cheese Championship. Oh, wow. So she was the first woman to Ooh, do so. so. There's so many women in the um, cheese world. Yeah. 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 Go girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hooks ages 600,000 pounds of cheese right now. Like, that's very impressive. And I'll be more impressed because Mineral Point, if you have a semi-truck, you could 
exit mineral point by the time the back end gets into mineral point. <laughs> we were there to see that it's that small. Really? And Hooks is a small facility. How many pounds you say they're doing? Six hundred thousand. When were you there? Wow. So this was maybe four years ago. Oh, okay. Went to visit them, and it's you know it's a tiny, tiny place. I'm um, not too far from Madison, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, but uh, can I tell you about this cheese? You would just it'd be shocked. You talk about the plastic mm -hmm. and the the reason some cheddars are put into plastic. They literally, this is a, a, a kind of a barn situation. They've got their cheese making facility. Mm -hmm. Then they put these big blocks of cheddar. They're about 80 pound blocks um, when they start mm -hmm. into these cryovac boxes, bags, Sharpie, hooks, 19, <laughs> what year, 2000, 2000, 21, whatever we are, <laughs> shove it up into the rafters. Oh Don't gosh. touch it for 12 years. Wait, really? They don't, don't even check they it? They don't turn it. They don't do anything to it. Set it just it sits it. there. Oh. This shocked me to no end. I've never seen such a thing. I'm shocked. Um, you would think it'd have to be cared for, turned, yeah. nurtured. You know, you see that with Parmigiano mm -hmm. or some of the Alpines and mm -hmm. stuff. Oh no, shoved <laughs> up in a box into the rafters and here is cheese. Is that not a miracle of science and a miracle of something? That's sort? crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I, 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 my jaw hit the floor. My jaw hit the floor. And this yeah. is the most expensive cheese we have in the store. Yes. Tell yes. it. What is this running now? This is twenty-eight fifty a half pound. So that block right there is eight pounds, and so that is a fifty-seven dollar block of cheese. That little guy right that there. Okay. You could eat on it a long time though. Think of how little you yeah. need one yeah. bite. Yeah. And you don't cook with this cheese. You do not. You just savor cook. this cheese. You just eat it. Mm -hmm. Mm. And you can tell that it, it was cut off, like you can tell where the edges were, where it was aging because of the, those calcium lactate crystals. Mm -hmm. Which I love yeah. that. The cal Actually, that's delicious. I kind of want to just <laughs> lick that off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they age mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. <laughs> no nine. No nine. Ten. No, no eleven. Twelve. I wonder why. Fifteen and twenty. Mm -hmm. I wonder why it's a movie. Because I know they taste it. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's something about that. And I thought the longer you would age cheddar, like before I researched all this, that it would be bitter and that it would mm -hmm. be, but it kind of like mellows out where it's very, it's still enjoyable. Some of them are a little bitter. I won't yeah. name names, but I, I did take <laughs> a class where it was a bunch of like super aged cheddars mm -hmm. and like the last two I was like, I don't even, I don't even want to eat this. This is, this is yeah. too bitter. Yeah, too. It just was, and some people like it and it's a preference thing too, so. Yeah. It's very rich. Oh, it, so, it definitely is. It, yeah. it's, 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 it's fudgy. We mm -hmm. talked about the fudgy. Mm -hmm. It's rich. Ryan thinks like with a little bit of scotch. That oh, could be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the For super sure. aged Gouda goes so good with scotch, yes. whiskey, mm -hmm. bourbon. Yes. Check this out the go. seven gram tastings that Rob's been yes, doing. Yes, we're doing one yeah. in uh, November again. Oh my Delicious. God, it was so fun. Was it super fun? Yeah. yeah. So great. Mostly because I discovered the chocolate covered Kikos there, but <laughs> <laughs> so you don't remember anything else. No. It was really just <laughs> Rachel the Kikos done in. We didn't do these though. What one should I be eating Ooh, this with? They're both good, so yeah. The peanut butter might be weird. I don't know. I love peanut butter with the Alpine. So which really? one we decided the Barbers was oh. Alpine esque? Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. With what's left. But why not just oh, dive in and um May I? I'm gonna cut in We're going to dessert now, everyone. I'm in other cultures, cheese Thank is you. dessert. So putting cheese and yeah. chocolate together for dessert is a good idea. I'm gonna try it with rustic bread. We're doing um. Mm -hmm. Now we're jumping into scared. this. Tell me about these unreals. Where'd you get this? Mm -hmm. Whole Foods. Mm, nice. <laughs> That's all I know. I wanted to get like oh, so chocolate with the cheddar, you know. So mm -hmm. I thought it'd be fun for Halloween and peanut butter with cheddar. I was really interested mm -hmm. in exploring that. That's a good thing. Good. Peanut nuts are good mm -hmm. with it. So why not peanuts? It all goes. It's not as bad with the cheese as I thought it would be. Well, you like the ch chocolate with the corn, yeah. so the chocolate with the cheese. Yeah, just the peanut mm -hmm. butter was like weirding me out, but you're okay. right, we do use nuts. Nuts with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, question from Mark. How do you keep the cheeses from spoiling after you buy, and how long will they keep? Mm -hmm. So, um, you can use plastic wrap, but if you have cheese paper, that's probably the best thing to use. Yeah, um, or wax paper. Or wax mm -hmm. paper. Um, mm -hmm. We do wrap our cheese with plastic, but we go through it so quickly that it doesn't really like affect it. But you just want to cut the air 
is applied to it. Yeah. Right? So, um, and cheddar will last a long time, very long time. If you happen to get little pieces of mold on it, just cut it off and it, it yeah. will still be fine. Like literally, you they've been sitting around for 12 years. You could age yeah. another, yeah. you know, a few years. What's going to happen? It'll start drying out. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll still be fine. So, mm -hmm. um, but that little bit of air is key. Yes. I'll often put, you know, cheeses just in a, I say Tupperware, but that's like so 70s. What do you call that now? Just a little container. Yeah. It's a little deli container. You call it Tupperware? Now it's like okay. Because I'm like, I said Tupperware thing. just now. I'm like, Ugh. does anybody <laughs> use that word? Um, with a little bit of air, but not too much air. Yeah, they sell, they sell these yeah. special trays with the lid and yeah. the little holes. Like, yeah. you put your vegetables mm -hmm. in it too, mm -hmm. just so there's circulation, but not. There's actually something called a cheese grotto that I did have yeah. on my wedding <gasps> register. For you a did? Minute. You didn't get like, one? Well, I don't know. I don't really have space for it. But yeah. anyway, yeah, where you can like age cheeses, kind not really age it, but just until you eat it. Like a little birdhouse for yeah, cheeses. It's awesome. <laughs> the English do it, and you just leave it on the counter. Oh yeah, room yeah. temp. Got a little bit of air in there, but not too much. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So, and if a little bit of mold should grow on top of that, yeah. like Mom said, scrape it away. The cheese underneath is fine. Yes, truly, truly is. So, yes. for especially for any of these aged type cheeses, that is 100% the case. Nothing yes. to worry about there. Yes. Um, so that was Mark Tracy. Well, we're talking about doing things with the wine connection. Perhaps we will, Tracy. She brought up that. Just doing the more wine-focused, mm -hmm. wine-centric mm -hmm. type things. Mm -hmm. um, we'll speak to them, see what we can do there. But uh, we do have our Wine on Wednesdays. If you haven't jumped <laughs> into one of those, I think next is Albarino. Uh, any types of wine. We do tons of wine. Um, but it's all good. Yeah. This was so informative, you guys. Yeah. I learned to learn so many about about each each other. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's fine. Right from yeah. different things. And you guys were awesome out there. Yes, <laughs> the questions I was like, I hope we I hope we answered everything. Yes. Uh, invite you to come in, try more cheddars. There's at any given time what you've got 10, 20 to choose from, right, in the shop here at Del Mar. A handful, yeah. yeah. Yeah, of cheddars. And it's all just it's just super fun um, to know that there's such a variety. Yeah. Yes. And like Rachel, you said, there, Tillamook is a good cheddar. I love myself a hunk of Tillamook. Yeah, There's right? <laughs> times, when I, and you can get that, you know, at a grocery mm -hmm. store. What I always say is if you're at, uh, I don't know, your Sprouts, your Ralph's, whatever, look at the label. Mm -hmm. And if it just says milk, salt, and rennet, you're good. Yep. I think it's when you it's see cheese. other weird stuff in there, that's when I would <laughs> say, preservatives, yeah, go somewhere else. Cheese get something product. Else. Cheese product, yeah. that's a weird word. Why do they no, even allow you. that? No, yeah. thank you. But you just see those ingredients on there, you're getting a good thing. Um, yeah. So uh, what's next on the um, friends? What oh, are the friends yeah. sharing blue. next? In December. You're going blue. blue. Now you I'm just blue. said. I'm not a fan of blue, but I am working my way. I will appreciate it. And then we'll see which blue I like. We're going to be so. singing the blues then? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Singing the blues. <laughs> and if you're scared of blues, don't be. Because I'm not. She's doing I'm it. I'm doing it. And yes. I'm, yeah. And you're going to be good. And you will have plenty of facts about blue. Because um, sure. Blues are say funky and wicked words. All the words I can't say. All the words, yes. <laughs> We're going to say them together. Gonna and I'm going to need a book. I'm going to need a cheat sheet on how to spell all those yeah, words right. when we're answering <laughs> the questions. Um, but you can find all of this, everybody. Tracy, you mentioned, you know, where can you see? If you just go to venissimo.com in the little tasting section, you'll see all the upcoming mm -hmm. Wino Wednesdays, um, the whiskey that you mentioned, mm -hmm. the next Friends yep. of Fromage, Fromage with Friends. And, um, um, Tomato, tomato. <laughs> we have a truffle one coming up here in Del Mar Ooh, in yeah. person, yeah, that sounds fun. which is going to be decadent. We're going to do another Parktoberfest, which is a reclet in a park. And if you yes. miss that one, it's fabulous. So it's just lots of yummy things to do with cheese. Mm -hmm. But this was amazing. I hope you all love cheddar. Now I love it even more. Yes. Cheddar's ridiculous. I'm going to eat this later. <laughs> now. <laughs> Thank you all from yes. Rachel, Christina, and myself, Great. Gina. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, and um, have a good night. Good night, Bye. everybody. Till next time. Au revoir. Arrivederci. Goodbye. So long. Farewell.